Katie's film is really shocking, uh, but I feel most shocked for the women who have had to come out and make this case. They deserve from co some cover from the wider Labour Party. Uh, it's clear that the stories that they were telling are ones that chime with my own experience, actually. Um, I think we have a real problem in getting capable young women from the Asian community selected, and it's not good enough to just say we're the most representative party. We've actually got to uphold our values and our selection procedures as well. Tell me, what about the issue in your own constituency? I know, you know you're not just interested in your own constituency, but tell me about your own constituency. Well, I've worked very hard over the last five or six years to try and make sure that each of our selections at local government and also for the parliamentary seat have been done fairly. Now, the real problem is that in broadly South Asian communities and constituencies, it's quite easy to sign up a large number of your friends, your family, okay. get them get them along uh, to meetings. But this process is known as membership packing. It's expressly outlawed in the rules of the Labour Party. Katie spoke to Najma Halafiz, who was involved in politics and who had been threatened. Her, her, uh, she was threatened that her son wouldn't reach his sixth birthday. Now, she seems quite bereft about what's going on just now. And I wonder if you think that things are not just as they were, but actually getting worse. I don't know whether the situation is getting worse. So there's this huge upward pressure from the second and third generation, capable, educated people that want to be representatives of our party, they are consistently being frozen out of selection processes just simply because they are the most capable and therefore the most threatening. I don't know whether it's getting any worse, but the situation, in my opinion, and for those women, couldn't get much worse. After you raised this with the General Secretary of the Labour Party, what was the response? What happened? I raised uh, concerns related to membership packing and, and what then came from it which is essentially good, capable young Asian women not necessarily getting selected uh, over a period of time that I've been a member of parliament and also directly uh, with senior officers in the party. But in my opinion, the things that I put forward were genuinely shocking, echo many of the things in this film, and yet still it feels like there's no support in terms of tackling these abuses on the ground. Well, I mean, Katie Razzle got a response from the Labour Party which simply said that we deal individually with you know, instances or allegations of instances of racism and sexism with the proper procedures. Is that enough? Well, I have sympathy with dealing on the narrow point around abuses of rules or selection. But what we're talking about is a cultural issue that needs to be challenged at every single level. And that requires elected parliamentarians, politicians and party officials challenging that culture day in, day out. Now, you talk about it being a cultural issue. It's not a religious issue, it's a cultural issue. In saying that, do you ever feel worried that you'll be fingered as some kind of racist? I don't, personally, because I feel like I'm representing my Muslim, Asian members who say to me consistently, we're good, we're capable, we're frozen out. Now, uh, this is the challenge for the Labour Party, actually. It used to perhaps be we could rely on blocks and votes of communities uh, now, I think that's less true. And so this isn't just a moral imperative, it's actually an electoral imperative. We can't carry on treating the Muslim community as fools. Uh, we need to serve up great candidates at every single level. The community knows when there are abuses of power. And have you spoken to MPs with uh, large South Asian communities? Yeah, I have. And uh, in those conversations, I think there is a sense in which if we were to kick up a fuss, would anything even happen? I have to say, as someone that has kicked up a fuss, uh, they may be right, actually. Is that not deeply depressing? I find it really depressing and extremely brutal that a member of the Parliamentary Labour Party has to come out to provide cover for women in our community who are suffering as a result of our inaction on this. But you talk about having spoken to officials, you talk about you know, having spoken to the General Secretary of the Labour Party. What is it that you want them to do? I've been disappointed with the response of the Labour Party in response uh, to uh, the allegations made by Newsnight. In recent weeks when I've spoken up about this issue, I felt extremely pressured to be silent on the things that I know to be true, the issues that I've already raised. And I think in many ways it represents the culture of our party in some ways that we need to change. When people come forward with legitimate concerns, they should be backed, not silenced. What do you want Jeremy Corbyn to do? I would like robust action from the leadership, uh, both uh, in uh, the Labour Party centrally, the NEC, um, but also from the leader of the Labour Party to say, look, if there are these practices, we will take the time to root them out. 
and more than that, where we've got people that are speaking up, we won't seek to silence them, we'll seek to listen to them and to work with them. Now that's something that Jeremy could do. Chippa, thank you very much indeed.